So here we have the inside of the Mega Touch Ion system. It's a mess in here. I, I don't know how this product ever actually existed. Um, just, just a PC just shoved in here. Is just a mess as possible. Um, but it did, and we're gonna try to hack it. So, that should be fun. So, we just hooked up a PC to the uh, PS2 keyboard, the PS2 port in there. I could probably just use a USB, but I don't have any USB keyboards up here. And eventually I'm gonna put, plug the network in. But let's just see how this thing boots. I put my uh, 2014 key in there, and I have a 2014 drive. You can see there it says CentOS release 5.2, which is nice because um, that's a standard distribution from probably oh, 10 years ago now. Wow, has it been that long? Um, but that's going to make life really easy, hopefully, um, because I'm just going to load up the, I have the CentOS CD, so I'm going to just load up um, some software and add it to there without without really much trouble at all, hopefully. Not that it would be trouble to load and install software on there anyway, but now it would be really easy. Hopefully. So when I see this boots, I've actually never booted this yet with this key in here and with the 2014 hard drive. We'll see what happens. So it looks like it's working. I believe that this version calls for 512 megs of RAM. I don't even know how much I have in there. Okay, so we have uh, we have a system here. Looks good. So now we're going to try to hack the system. So first thing I'm going to do, try to reboot this thing. Oh. So now we're going to just hit tab a bunch of times to get in the bootloader. There we go. All right, hit tab and I got a standard grub um, bootloader here. I'm going to edit the command line arguments. Interesting. Um, I'm just going to hit E for edit, go down, and then hit E again, and add S at the end of the line and hit return. And then hit B for boot. That should boot me into single user mode. All right, and it does, and doesn't need a password. So that's great. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually um, change the root password so I can log in without single user mode, and I'm gonna put the system to automatically boot um, to not start up the whole game system, just to boot and give me a shell. So first thing I need to do is I believe this is going to be mounted read-only, so I'm just going to try to create a file. I'm going to do touch etsy passwd temp. And it says read-only file system, so I have to remount the file system. So I'm going to do mount minus o r, uh, I'm sorry, remount rw, remount comma rw slash, 
Okay, now it should be reminded, and I should be able to change the password. So I'm going to type pass, P-A-S-S-W-D, set the password, I'm going to just do ABC123. Good. Um, and the reason I had to do this command first is because I can't change the root password if I can't write to the password database. And because it's read-only, I couldn't write to it. So now it's read-write. Um, and I'm the VI Etsy init tab, which is the system, how the system boots. And what I want to do is, I'm just, gonna, I'm just looking to see what it's doing here. Yeah, it's doing to level five. Um, in a default, it starts with the graphical subsystem and it's, it's gonna start with the game, I'm pretty sure there. I'm gonna change this from five to three. Because I can always start the graphics later. But now, hopefully when I reboot, I'll get the whole working system and a shell prompt. Um, because right now, I'm not, I'm missing called single user mode. Um, but it, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you go from here. But. So I'm gonna save it, change it to three, and reboot, and hopefully it will reboot now without, um, really any issues. I should be able to use the root login and password and then start mucking around. And then if that works, the next step is I'm gonna hook the network cable up and I'm gonna go downstairs and work on this from my, my workstation because I have a lot more. Um, it's easier for me to work on my machine downstairs because I have a billion monitors on it. And this thing, I think there's something wrong with the, uh, I don't know, maybe the power supply of the BIOS, I don't know. Um, it's easy to do this a lot. But um, yeah, so once I get this hooked in the network, then I can do it. And it's a lot easier for me to record. I can get a better recording because I can do screen captures. So, but first let's make sure this works. You can see it's entering run level three, that's what I told it to do. Good, and here's where it got, remember last time I did this, but then it started up the graphics. Um, here it's not starting up the graphics, so I should be able to log in, root, ABC, one, two, three. Good, this is where we wanna be. So um, that's it all for today. When I come back, uh, the next step is I'm gonna, I have to actually run network cable. I think I have one up here. I know I do, um, but I'm gonna run it, or make sure it works, the network's plugged in and uh, then give this guy an IP address and uh, start up the SSH server, and then I will work on it from my, um, my workstation. Thanks for watching.